Yeah, if I think of future-proofing cross-channel video measurement, I think of it in a couple phases, the immediate and the long-term. So the immediate change needs to be around not being reliant on identifiers that we know are going to die. So there's still a lot of measurement that's actually based on cookies and maze. And we've had a couple years, years of warning that those identifiers are going away. So that should be a 2022 agenda item if it wasn't a 21 or 20 agenda item for marketers to make sure their, their investments in measurement aren't reliant on, reliant on identifiers that are going away. Thinking longer term, we have to be prepared. I, I don't think a, any marketer should be blindsided by an identity change in the future the way some were blindsided by the death of the cookie a couple years ago. So we should think of what does measurement look like in a world where we don't have user level or household level exposure data in certain channels because there is a day that that is com could be coming for certain channels, may come for certain channels. Mm -hmm. So we should understand that and have measurement plans that think beyond just the individual and the household and start thinking about micro cohorts, start thinking about clean rooms. So we're, we're fully future proof looking a few years out. Now as part of that uh, future proofing, when you look at all parts of the purchase funnel, um, what are, are there distinctions between brand building versus performance marketing or, or are they getting mixed or wh what do you see? Yeah, I think they are getting mixed and we talk about this a lot with marketers and it's a popular topic with CTV marketers because we firmly believe CTV is the world's best brand building channel. We talk about it with our customers as the best of both worlds. You have the full screen immersive storytelling capabilities of linear and the granular targeting of digital. So it's a phenomenal vehicle for marketers to tell their stories to the right audience and get lift from the right audience. And I think a misconception is that you have to either choose to take a performance approach for performance goals and be very analytically rigorous or take a brand building storytelling approach and be very squishy and fuzzy. And that's maybe that was true in the past, but it's certainly no longer true. And we like to cite a McKinsey phrase that they coined called performance branding that argues you can absolutely be as analytically rigorous with your top of funnel brand investments these days. You don't need to think of uh, top of funnel as squishy and, and fuzzy anymore. Now, in the, in the past few years, we've seen a significant shift in consumer uh, viewing behavior, uh, the growth in CTV and different video on demand platforms. For marketers who are trying to reach those audiences, some of them may be cord cutters, cord nevers. What do you see as the future for cross-platform? Yeah, certainly the last couple of years we've seen this explosion in streaming consumption, CTV consumption, and more and more consumers, especially younger ones, aren't even thinking about it as connected TV versus linear. They're just calling it television, and, and we have to adapt to that. And I think the ph philosophical shift that we have needed to see happen and is starting to happen is for marketers to not think of their activation strategies and measurement strategies as fully siloed by channel. So I have my digital video dollars here and my linear dollars here, then we're fighting over where the, which one funds the, the CTV campaign. Because you think about it from a consumer standpoint, if they're watching an ad on their favorite show, that could be on a streaming app on a big screen, on linear on the big screen, in a browser, on their computer. To the consumer, they don't care where they're consuming the content and how they're receiving the message. So marketers need to be a little more agnostic in their measurement and think about measuring all channels together and in concert with each other versus having a separate measurement strategy for, for every single channel. And I'm curious about uh, the different kinds of metrics. Uh, you know, in digital advertising, you get a lot of impression-based measurement. Uh, traditional, we often talk about uh, reach and lift metrics. What do you see as far as kind of connecting some of these uh, different kinds of measurement and metrics? Yeah, we think of a couple of things. First is parsing what the word reach means. So reach is often used in the television landscape to mean reach as a currency. So let's count how many people we reach, which is certainly essential for the transaction. That's table stakes measurement. So there's great work being done by a lot of companies driving towards uh, a multi-currency world that everyone's talking about here at the Beat Retreat. But reach also is not just how many people you're reaching. Reach is who are you reaching. Is a beer advertiser reaching a beer drinker? Is a pet food advertiser reaching a pet owner? And I think a lot of times those questions of who get overlooked with all the energy that goes towards how many. So I think that's, when we think of reach, we think of the who question. 
And to your, your point around reach and lift uh, together, we ab absolutely agree with that. There's a yin and yang between reach and lift. You need both to measure impact. If you're reaching the right people but not lifting them, you're not having impact. If you're lifting people but it's, you're lifting the wrong people, you're not having impact. So you need to understand who you're reaching. You need to understand are you lifting them on your, the KPIs you're measuring. And that's how you can really think about brand impact of advertising. And when you talk to a chief marketing officer, is, uh, what are some of the pain points that they are discussing and uh, what are your ideas as far as how to uh, solve those? Yeah, we've seen this trend we've talked about as the CMO's dilemma when we talk to CMO's. And that dilemma is bluntly put to waste money or get fired. And a lot of CMO's are very open with their fears on this and their struggles talking to CFO's. And the waste money portion means they're driven by CFO's to chase short-term goals to a fault and they're over, over investing in lower funnel tactics that they know will hurt the brand a few years down the road because they're choking that top of funnel investment and demand generation. Uh, but if they just in, invest in the way they want to in top of funnel but don't have the measurement to prove it works, that that's the risk of getting fired is of a CFO saying, you spent 200 million on brand building, you don't have the metrics to prove this. So CMOs feel that tension. So what we know CMOs want from the measurement ecosystem is to measure the future impact of today's top of funnel wins so they can tell that CFO in that financial review discussion, here's my investment in top of funnel, here's the wins we got, and here's my forecast of why that's going to pay off. May not pay off this quarter, may not pay off this year, but if we have rigorous modeling, we can be confident that that investment pays off and we can then solve that tricky CMO's dilemma.